From the early 20th century, Los Angeles has been synonymous with the Hollywood film industry and its stars. Hollywood Boulevard is paved with the names of celluloid heroes and heroines, and the city is watched over by the sign which has launched a thousand dreams. But the City of Angels has been quietly making a name for itself in another area of the arts. In the 21st century, Los Angeles is regarded as one of the world's major art centers. New York has long been recognized as America's art capital. There's no question that it's the center of the art market. But Los Angeles is producing exceptional artists. There's a buzz about the sprawling conurbation, an exciting mix of cultures that's got the art world looking to the West Coast. Los Angeles now has in excess of 150 art galleries, world-renowned art museums, and some major private collectors. We're focusing on just four of the artists who make the Los Angeles art scene the exciting and experimental arena it is today. I've always sort of felt that there's, you know, the art and the practice of making art, and then there's the art world. Because of our class consciousness, you know, we don't want to just be totally, uh, you know, creating a boutique marketplace just for the demands of the art world. Being born and raised here in East LA, Boyle Heights specifically, I. I feel a bit of like a hybrid or maybe even an alien. <laughs> the latest figure that the average amount of time given to a painting is something like six seconds. That's all the time you have. Gaijin Fujita's art is a fusion of cultures. His parents are Japanese, but he grew up in the largely Latino district of Boyle Heights in East Los Angeles. You can see this mix in the panel pieces, which layer street graffiti with traditional Japanese figures and iconography. And the effect is both beautiful and arresting. Growing up in East Los Angeles, Gaijin was exposed to gang culture from an early age and, with a number of his friends, was attracted to the street art he saw all around his neighborhood. The East LA gang culture is something that I was, well, visually speaking, I was kind of forced to look at. The gang members would come and do um, these placasos or uh, block letterings that signified their territory or their their name and and their crew of people. Sometimes you'll see those kinds of tags involved in my my studio work, and I think it kind of adds an edge or or a flair to to my work. Continuing to work from his childhood home, Gaijin recruits the friends he grew up with to tag his pieces. This street graffiti element forms the background to each of his paintings. What he's doing is a, uh, what we call a throw-up, and it constitutes bubble letters, as you can see. These are done really fast on the streets, and you've got to be kind of stealth. These days, many of Gajin's old haunts are being replaced by new buildings, but there are still areas where graffiti artists can practice. A car park close to Gajin's home has been turned into a sanctioned graffiti park. Graffiti was my primary source of talent that I started out with out on the streets, and um, I've always tried to keep that as an integral part of my work. And as you can see with my finished work in the studio, I always end up with um, a word that kind of solidifies my piece and resolves it as a title and it'll usually be a great or a, a nice um, 
schematic of graffiti fonts in the foreground and that's how I usually end my pieces with. Gagin is represented in New York and Los Angeles where Louvre Gallery director Peter Goulds has worked with him since early in his career. I think the scope of his imagination and I think the broader understanding of the relationship of um, the cultural fusion that perhaps is going on on one level is getting more and more sophisticated as he moves out. He's getting much more studious and particular about the 19th century Japanese illustrative tradition that he's um, abiding by on the one hand and how it pertains to contemporary society from his point of view on the other. The last um, show that I had done, which was at the LA County Museum, and I thought that there was two great pieces there. So I thought Ride or Die was um, sort of the tour de force piece of the show. Um, for it, for it imaged a real aggressive um, samurai on horseback and kind of a violent scene um, that I tried to recreate, um, basically a war scene, and sort of incorporated and tried to juxtapose um, some contemporary ideas like using the Los Angeles Dodgers logo um, on the helmets of the samurai. There's so many different facets to my work that I think I can um, keep evolving to, to the very end. And um, that's the one great thing I, I feel really fortunate about, uh, using different types of cultural imagery that I've been playing with.